Fox 9 on your side at 9 starts now. She was a beautiful girl who only wanted to be loved. Tonight, police believe an abusive relationship took a deadly turn. Today is a sad day for our community. A body found in a Melba cornfield. This is not just a television show. This is not uh, just a criminal investigation. This is a tragedy. And four men charged in connection with the killing of Selena Thomas. If you know anyone who's in, in a violent relationship, do your best to get help before it's too late. Fox 9 team coverage starts right now. As On Your Side was first to report this evening, police found a body they believe to be Selena Thomas. The Nampa woman was last seen leaving work on Friday. Detectives found uh, the body this afternoon in a Melba cornfield. Selena Thomas's case is being classified as a homicide, but investigators have not formally identified the body. Thomas's boyfriend is in jail as a person of interest. What I will say is based on the evidence gathered earlier, the fact that we were out here, the fact that we have found a human buried in, in the dirt here, uh, that gives us that high probability that this is uh, Selena Thomas. Three men have been arrested in conjunction with the murder, but Thomas's boyfriend, Alfredo Martinez, has not been formally charged and is being held on a separate probation violation. Right now, friends and family of Selena Thomas are gathering to remember her. And Lauren Johnson is live in Nampa at the candlelight vigil. Roland and Michelle, friends and family, you're right, they are gathered here. It was a very large turn of, turnout for this candlelight vigil going on right now in honor of Selena Thomas. These ribbons have also been handed out in Selena's favorite color, teal and purple. Selena was a mother. She was full of life and people say she was incredibly loving. As we now know, Selena Thomas's case has been classified as a homicide. A body has been found still awaiting to be formally identified. Thomas's boyfriend has confessed to hitting her with a hammer. It's a terrible ending to a relationship that Thomas's family say was physically abusive. Tonight, mourners gather and there also has been a strong request by her aunt, who's here tonight to work to stop domestic violence. Her cousin also spoke with us about what type of woman Selena was. She was always outgoing and loving and caring. She's such a good person. She gave to whoever needed help. She was always there. We had a lot of good times. We were, she's my second cousin, but I mean, we were, we were close. We kind of separated for a while and kind of regret that now. A representative from the Family Justice Center also spoke about help that is available for anyone that is in a domestic violent relationship. Uh, also, again, I've spoke with several people here tonight, Roland and Michelle, and, and many people here tonight that knew Selena, and they all say the same thing, and that is just how loving Selena was, how kind she was, and how caring she was. So it's a beautiful thing for people to be gathered here. Lauren Johnson in Nampa, back to you. Thanks so much, Lauren. Well, Selena Thomas's mother, even her aunt, spoke this morning. This all happened before a body was found. Their plea, though, was to convince anyone in an abusive relationship to get out of it tonight. Fox 9's Tammy Scardino continues our team coverage. She was a beautiful girl who only wanted to be loved. An emotional day for the family of Selena Thomas. Her mom and aunt spoke this morning, hours before a body was found. They talked about the uncertainty of not knowing. It's a difficult time to sit and not know where your family is. That's the hardest thing. They've done an amazing job in reassuring us that this would be a job that they would resolve and we would have closure at some point. Selena's mother sent a message for anyone in an abusive relationship. I want every young woman, any, every woman, that if anybody starts anything with you, it starts with a push, maybe a slap, get away. And a message of thanks to the police department. We'd like to thank the Napa Police Department 
all of the many detectives that work diligently around the clock and all of the other law enforcement agencies that were extending their services. Tammy Scardino, Fox 9 on your side. That picture that Thomas's mother was holding at the news conference, that was of Selena and her son. So according to court documents, Alfredo Martinez, the boyfriend, appears to have recruited friends and family into this crime. This afternoon, the three men were arraigned in Canyon County Court, all charged with felonies. Jose Flores, Martinez's nephew, charged with accessory after the fact of murder. Jorge Garcia and Daniel Senior, also both charged with destruction of evidence. Let's recap tonight's team coverage. Police this afternoon found a body in a Melba cornfield. They believe it is that of Selena Thomas, a Nampa woman missing since last week. Her boyfriend is in jail tonight and three other men are charged as accessories. Turn to IdahoOnYourSide.com for the latest as this case develops. Napa police say domestic violence was a factor in the death of Selena Thomas. Coming up in about 10 minutes, we're going to go in depth on the warning signs of domestic violence and what to do if you or someone you know is in a violent relationship. We've continued our cool trend in the Treasure Valley. Temperatures were only into the low 80s for a high today, and it kept things feeling quite nice. However, there's been severe weather in the eastern portions of the, the state and in the Magic Valley. Here we see live Doppler radar. Uh, Idaho Falls particularly getting pounded right now with heavy rain. There are reports of hail and lightning in there as well. Earlier today, just east of Arco, there was a tornado warning. This has been a system that's been in our area all day or in the eastern uh, Idaho area all day and it has been very severe in Twin Falls. They've been under a severe thunderstorm warning earlier in the day. They are under a weather advisory throughout the evening until midnight. So if you are living Twin Falls, certainly be aware of uh, the things happening around you. Switch computers though, currently over in Boise. We do have clouds increasing, but it feels pretty nice. 79 degrees right now currently in Boise with just a light wind, six miles per hour coming up out of the northwest. Uh, and today we get, did get to 83, which is pretty good because uh, our normal is 89. So we're, we're well below normal, Roland and Michelle, but uh, are we going to continue that way? Going to have to find out in my full On Your Side forecast. It sure was nice. Was Enjoy pleasant. those temperatures. Yeah. yeah, very pleasant. Thanks, Jake. Thanks, Jake. The White House, again, under fire for the release of Idaho Army Sergeant Bo Bergdahl from his Taliban captors. The Government Accountability Office says the Pentagon broke the law when it failed to give Congress advance notice of its plans to swap captured Taliban fighters for Bergdahl. The GAO also says the Defense Department violated laws when it used funds that Congress had not approved to conduct the prisoner exchange. In May, five senior Taliban leaders were released from Guantanamo Bay, Cuba, in exchange for Bergdahl, who spent five years as a Taliban prisoner of war. We're going to have much more on the Bergdahl report coming up in Fox 9's second half hour. If you build it, they will come. It worked for the Field of Dreams, but now a local athlete is hoping it works in reverse for a one-of-a-kind sports complex in Meridian. It would cost $40 million to build. But first on Fox, Sportsplex Idaho says it's already well on its way to success. You could have concerts, you could have conventions, you could have state championships. You have when you're six foot eight, it's a good bet you have a little sports in your background. I built a basketball career out of the state, which is rare to do, and certainly want to help anybody who's young or ambitious that wants to do the same thing. And even though the Sun Valley natives' professional playing days are over, Sofro has big plans for the future. Multi-tiered, world-class athletic fitness, performance, training center. Sportsplex Idaho is his brainchild. The 185,000 square foot sports facility would include playing fields, an education wing, and full service sports medicine wing, just to name a few. It would require 15 acres of land, and it won't be located in Boise. You know, the most I can reveal right now is that Meridian is where this thing is going to be. Sofro says the facility would be a non-profit center designed to increase sports opportunities for local kids. There's evidence here that suggests that there are over 50,000 kids just in the Treasure Valley alone that aren't playing sports, not because they don't want to, but because they have nowhere to play. Sofro says he has six building tenants lined up and investment interest both locally and nationally. But so far, he's keeping those critical details secret. We had a vision 
Sapporo's group has rented the Stuckel Sky Center at uh, Boise State for a fundraiser dinner to announce the official location of the Sportsplex uh, September 12th. Perhaps at that time we'll learn more about how he plans to pay for it all. Now you can find ticket information for the event at uh, the web page right there on your screen. Idaho's largest school district, West Ada, formerly the Meridian District, is seeking approval for a $104 million bond on Tuesday. It's the first time the school district has asked voters to approve a bond in nine years. It would help build two more schools, add more space, and reduce overcrowding, eliminating many portable classrooms. Lake Hazel Middle School currently has 10 portables with only one bathroom for the students to use. 800 more kids this year. We are heading back to the 1,000 new kids a year trend, and the only way to keep up with that with the system that we have to build schools now is to run bonds fairly periodically. On Your Side reporter Lauren Johnson spoke with district administrators and asked some tough questions, many of those from our On Your Side viewers who wrote in, including, what exactly does this bond mean for your taxes? We're going to have the full story coming up tomorrow night right here on Fox 9 at 9. Well, it's nothing new. You hear Big Brother is watching you. But it appears now that you're actually being trapped by an app that you likely use every day and you don't even know it. Almost all of us use this. Yeah. It's nothing new for Google to track what you search for or who you're emailing. But now the app you use for directions is likely also tracking your every move. I think it's really scary. Scary and downright irritating. It does feel a little bit like an invasion of privacy. One of the most used apps for directions is hot on your trail. <laughs> tracking everywhere you go. It doesn't matter if you're in a car or on foot. Hidden away in the fine print of Google Maps is your agreement allowing the app to monitor your movement, something mothers like Eden Banzoff aren't too keen on. I kind of felt betrayed. I felt a little bit like it was invasive and that it wasn't disclosed to me that that would be something that they would be capable of. The tracking relies on Wi-Fi and your phone's location services to track where you are. As a reporter, you can imagine that I do a lot of traveling. So I wanted to know, is this app tracking me? So I checked, and sure enough, it is. From Fairview and Cole in Boise, to work in I-84 in Franklin and Nampa, to downtown, and back out west to Cleveland and Happy Day for a story in Caldwell, all the way to State and Veterans Memorial in Boise, and back to work. The ability that people have to see you through just the simple apps on your cell phone is really scary, and I think that people are kind of taking it too far. You look at it initially and say, that's, you know, that, that's kind of offensive. Mm -hmm. Neil Custer is president and CEO of Reveal Digital Forensic and Security. He understands the concern people have, but he says it's being done to make your experience online better. The way people are making money on the <laughs> Internet is used collecting that information and selling it to people, you know, big box stores. The tracking may optimize your online experience, but it also comes with a risk, and Custard knows that. You know, it, it's not that difficult to get so access to somebody's Google, Google account, and then you could activate that feature, or you could look in, on, if they have the feature activated, you could look at it. A risk you're agreeing to, simply by downloading the app, allowing Google Maps to keep an eye on you. It's a matter of reading the fine print, which nobody does and knowing what its capabilities are. I'm okay with them gathering material, um, maybe to identify what my shopping habits are, those kind of things, but I don't like my privacy being public. That was Chris Oswald reporting. Now, Custer told us this is just a sign of the times, but we refuse to accept that. On Your Side found out how to disable the tracking portion of Google Maps. Just go to our website, IdahoOnYourSide.com. Click the story to see how. Do you need our help or have a story idea? Send us an email through our website, IdahoOnYourSide.com, and we will check it out. Fox 9 On Your Side continues tonight. Coming up in our second half hour. A Utah mom is upset after her daughter given school lunch from a trash can. And coming up next, in depth on the issue of domestic violence after the death of a Nampa woman who police believe was in an abusive relationship. Roland Ferris, Michelle Edmonds, Chief Meteorologist Scott Dorval, Sports with Paul Gerke. This is Fox 9 on your side at 9. 
With the recent death of a Nampa woman, Fox 9 goes in depth on the issue of domestic violence. Such tonight. an important issue. Yes. B Black with the Women's and Children's Alliance came in tonight because I'm sure when you first heard this story, B, you just shake your head once again. Possibly I really another do. victim. It's absolutely the worst outcome from any domestic violence situation yeah. is to have it end in a tragedy like this. Yeah. Well, and you help people get out of these situations, but when we yes. heard the stories tonight uh, about uh, the urgency of getting out of the situation mm -hmm. that you're in, it's not always that easy. No, it's not, and it's such a complicated dynamic mm -hmm. because I'm sure that there is care and love involved, mm -hmm. particularly to start with, and attention is flattering. And so when someone starts to recognize that maybe this is a little bit too controlling of a relationship and it starts to not feel good. And there are some warning signs. You know, there are some warning signs that we can talk about. We have a whole so, bunch of them we'd like to put up on the screen and be able to yeah. let people know about them. But biggest warning signs in your book, what are they? The biggest things in my book, if somebody is constantly trying to figure out where are you, huh. what are you doing, telling you what you shouldn't or should or shouldn't wear, telling you who you can or can't see, starting to isolate you from people that you have typically been in contact with, friends, family, mm -hmm. those to me are really red flags. And no matter how much they profess to care about you or how much they want to be with you because you're so important and they're jealous of anybody else, right. it's a really red flag if they're starting to isolate you from other people that have been your support in your family. It shows the controlling influence. Absolutely. Um, it, when someone has decided, I need to get out of this, what are the first steps and how do they do it to do it safely? Well, I would really recommend that you call either our hotline, which is the 343-7025. It's anonymous. You can talk to the person at the other end. You can describe what's going on and have somebody that can help you step through and, and perhaps think about what are some alternatives. You can call the National Domestic Violence Hotline and those, can, those resources can be found online. Um, you can come into our office and talk. One of the tricky things is, especially if somebody's being, in a sense, stalked or watched, mm -hmm. is how do you make that call? So if you happen to be a person that is able to go to work and at that point are away from the person that is trying to control your life, mm -hmm. then that is a perfect opportunity to try to make that call or reach out to the HR person in your employer's uh, in your employer's office. What about for people, B, who I can just imagine, Selena Thomas's mother, I mean, obviously devastated tonight. Mm -hmm. What if you're watching somebody in an abusive relationship? Mm -hmm. How do you get their attention and say, hey, don't you yeah. see what's going yeah. on? I mean, as a mother. It's I, heartbreaking. Oh, it just kills me. It's heartbreaking. And we have individuals that come on tours and that will tell us that they know someone they love is in a relationship and they can't get them to see it. Right. So one of the things we'll do is we'll provide them, the person who's concerned, with places that they can go for reading materials to get ideas. One of the things that I like to suggest is bring them to one of our tours. Mm -hmm. Take them to a place where they can learn a little bit more. It's not that we're going to try to convince them of something, but you never know when the right word, the right reading material, the right handout falls into someone's hands and they kind of recognize that and they go, mm -hmm. wow, you know, this is me. Well, we hope by having you on tonight, if anybody out there is having these issues, if yeah. you need a place to call, you've heard where to go. The Women's and Children's Alliance mm -hmm. is a brilliant place. And the number on the screen there, mm -hmm. uh, if you haven't gotten help already Please. from our segment tonight, that's where you call, 343-7025, and they can help you out. B, B thanks so much for coming do. in tonight. Yes, It's my pleasure. Thank you. All right, Jake's in the Weather Center gathering the very latest information. He'll be back with a complete On Your Side forecast. And don't let the hot summer weather get you down. Gardening expert Jim Zanzo has some tips for how to water your grass. It was a calm and cool day here in the Treasure Valley, but in the Magic Valley, there was quite a bit of uh, severe storms. In fact, here's a photo of evidence of a severe storm. That right there is hail that fell around Twin Falls. That was sent in by James Taylor for the Modern Mechanical Weather Picture of the Day. Thanks for sending that in, James. Uh, I, I bet there's a lot of hail 
pictures out there. So uh, please send those in to us at iContribute at KIVITV.com. We'll be sure to put it on our uh, website and, of course, show it to you right here. Well, here's a time lapse of the Treasure Valley from the village at Meridian. You can see those clouds begin to come in. They sort of developed a little bit in the, uh, in the mountains there. And... Uh, yeah, it's been a pretty calm day. Live look at the village at Meridian shows us that it is uh, quiet, 74 degrees. Very cool evening. It'll be a pleasant evening, though, if you plan on going out tonight. With winds of the southwest only 5 miles per hour. Uh, around the area, it is a cooler day, 64 degrees in Baker City. Stanley, a cool 57. And the latest models show that some precipitation coming our way could actually be mixed with snow. Can you believe that in August? Potential for mixed precipitation up in the mountains already. Well, you look uh, around and let's let's take a look at the system that we're dealing with. This low pressure system is going to be bringing that precipitation and has already brought some of the precipitation we saw in the Magic Valley and eastern parts of Idaho. That's going to dip farther south over the next 24 hours, really the next 12 hours, and it's going to start affecting us even here in the Treasure Valley. So we're going to see temperatures continue their decline down. We're going to be up to 10 uh degrees cooler than normal in the Treasure Valley. So uh, tomorrow 80 degrees, a cool 80 degrees with a chance of showers and you'll start to be feeling it a little bit cooler as well. This is the next three days, the precipitation map, and you can see so most of the precipitation will be falling well west of us and to the north. Not too much concern, but there is going to be a chance of seeing up to about two tenths of an inch in parts of the valley and in the mountains we could be seeing even as much as half of an inch of precipitation and uh, again current models show that in parts near Stanley we could see some mixed precipitation that's, that's something that we're going to be keeping an eye on because that is certainly not normal well tomorrow across the Treasure Valley it's going to be 83 degrees in Ontario 79 in Nampa and 81 in Mountain Home about a 40 percent chance of seeing rain throughout the area in the West Central Mountains Way better chance of seeing some precipitation here, a 90% chance in areas near McCall, and a good chance of seeing some thunderstorms later in the day up there too. And it will be cooler, only into the mid-70s uh, in, in the mountain areas and the mid-80s in the valleys. Cool up in Stanley, 67 degrees, chance of showers there, and it will be uh, a cooler day in the Magic Valley. Again, it's going to be cooler. It's just that system making its way through. Only into the mid-70s, and a good chance of seeing some showers there, too. Later in the day, that could become some severe weather. Let's go ahead and take a look at my extended forecast here. The cool weather is not going to be leaving us anytime soon. So if you have been tired of being in the high 90s and seeing that humidity that we've had that's so oppressive, <laughs> well, here's your break. <laughs> so Next oppressive. Week. That's right. Heat is oppressive, Roland. I, I, I don't care what you have to say about it. It just weighs you down. It causes you to sweat and makes my life. You a need to visit to Florida sometime to see what humidity <laughs> well, is. Listen, I have no <laughs> intent of going anywhere near. Right. I guess I, okay, I'll stop complaining. Okay. It's going to be cool, though. That's it's, the important part. It It'll does look nice. nice. All nice right, stick. let's send it over to Jim Zanzo. And now, Jim's garden tip. Once your lawn has been diagnosed with insects, the first thing you want to do is kill the insects and then fertilize. If you fertilize first without putting on an insect control, you're just going to propagate insects. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to kill the bill bugs, and then we want to fertilize. And in the heat of summer, we want to fertilize with a very slow-release fertilizer, something high in humus that will help hold water in the soil. Be sure to follow the instructions on the bag. This particular application calls for a setting of four and a half with this particular spreader. Just pour your material into the hopper, and then you want to make sure that you adequately overlap so that you get the entire lawn area. I like to go around the perimeter of lawn one time and then parallel the rest of the time. Once you've applied your insect control, you want to water it in well, and then within a day or two, you can fertilize. In the heat of summer, you don't want to use a chemical fertilizer that's high in nitrogen. It can actually cause more problems in your lawn than good. So we use a very slow-release organic-based fertilizer. Humus-based products are very high in minerals and trace minerals, and those are the things that help a grass to be very healthy. If a large area of your lawn has been killed out by insects or disease, then it would be ideal to rake it out and overseed it. Join me next time for the most important ingredient for a healthy lawn, proper watering.
If you'd like to learn more about Jim's Garden Tips, it's easy. Just head to our website, IdahoOnYourSide.com. You'll click on Jim's Garden Tips. I just drowned my lawn. <laughs> Not intentionally, but it just won't go away. Next on Fox 9 On Your Side, the people of Ferguson, Missouri, hope that they have turned the corner on protests over the killing of an unarmed African-American teenager. You're watching Fox 9 on your side at 9. Headlines tonight from Ferguson, Missouri. National Guard troops are going home. But the controversial county prosecutor insists he is not going anywhere. Attorney General Eric Holder has come and gone, but not without igniting talk of a prosecutorial double standard. Fox's Mike Tobin has this update from Ferguson right now in America. Peace. Demonstrators in Ferguson are largely unaware of or unimpressed by the visit of U.S. Attorney General Eric Holder. He gets a D minus on his trip to St. Louis. Holder promised a fast and thorough investigation into the death of Mike Brown. He attempted to reassure the black community that things will get better. As I indicated to them, I think this is out of this tragedy comes a great opportunity um, for reforming that, um, that community. While in Ferguson, Holder told students when he was a young lawyer, he was stopped on the New Jersey Turnpike by police and forced out of his car. The car searched. He says he was a victim of racial profiling, humiliated by police. He now promises his investigation of the police will be fair. Black leaders in Ferguson held a press conference announcing their petition with 70,000 signatures demanding that County Prosecutor Bob McCulloch be removed from the case because he comes from a law enforcement family. His father, a trooper, was killed by a black man in 1964. Therefore, they claim he cannot be objective. Worldwide, people have made a statement to Bob McCulloch that they have no confidence in his ability to be fair and impartial. McCulloch issued a statement. I have no intention of walking away from the responsibilities and duties entrusted to me by the people of this community. Additionally, there is no basis in the law to do so. Their demands also include the immediate firing of Officer Darren Wilson, the removal of Police Chief Thomas Jackson, and Ferguson Mayor James Knowles. We want justice! Here's your peace! Today there is hope that chaos in the street rounded a corner. These night I've seen small steps. And sometimes those small steps are hard to see, but I know small steps turn into big steps. And so I've been, we've been taking small steps every night. Governor Jay Nixon announced the National Guard will begin withdrawing from Ferguson. Guardsmen never had a role down here at the demonstrations with crowd control or crime prevention. They were always doing security back at the command post. But the fact that they were in Ferguson enhanced the notion of a militarized state of emergency. In Ferguson, Missouri, Mike Tobin, Fox News. Former Virginia Governor Bob McDonnell talk about his rocky state of his marriage during today's testimony and his and his wife's trial on corruption charges. And McDonnell's legal team has maintained that it was mainly his wife, Maureen, who was accepting more than $165,000 in gifts and loans from a wealthy Virginia businessman in exchange for political favors. And moreover, that the McDonald's could not have conspired because husband and wife were barely speaking. You're seeing this politician on the stand having to walk this tightrope between selling out his wife. I mean, ultimately, that's what he's doing and still maintaining some sympathy with the jury so that they don't think he's a jerk for doing so. McDonnell also told the jury that he had dinner with the businessman and hosted an event for his company at the governor's mansion because McDonnell thought it could possibly create some jobs. The mother of a Utah special needs student is furious after her daughter was given pizza out of the trash. She explains she had to eat it because she's diabetic. Caroline Connolly reports. It's only Sierra Prince's second day of school. And she's already not looking forward to a third. The eighth grader at Pleasant Grove Junior High says when she asked for a piece of pizza for lunch at school, a staff member served her what was left from the top of a trash can. I didn't really like the taste of it at all. It was nasty. A diabetic with learning disabilities, Prince says she just did what her school appointed aide and staff told her to. I didn't want to eat it, but I was dosed for pizza anyway, and I, because um, I'm diabetic, so I had to eat it. A decision by the school that isn't sitting well with her mother. How could that happen to, to a child? How, what adult makes that decision? It's common sense. We don't eat out of trash cans. 
After Nicole Cordoba complained to the Alpine School District, the Nutrition Services Director sent this email to school employees, saying in part, quote, This was totally unacceptable. Your employee needs a reprimand and a discipline warning issued immediately. We never serve food that has been placed in a garbage can. Sierra can't make her own decisions on what she eats. That's why they hired the helper. Um, not only one person made the decision for Sierra to eat out of the trash, three adults did. Just two days into school, Cordoba is now worried about the remainder of the year. Just make sure our kids are safe. That's why we send them to school, so they can learn and they're safe. We don't send them there so they can eat out of the trash can. An American doctor, once fighting for his life against the deadly Ebola virus, has beaten the odds. Wow, great news. He was officially released this morning from a Georgia hospital. How about that? Dr. Kent Brantley right there became infected with the virus while treating others in Liberia. He was given an experimental drug, later treated back to health at Emory Hospital's infectious disease unit. The World Health Organization says more than 1,300 people are dead from the outbreak in West Africa. Another Ebola patient, Nancy Reitball, was treated and released this week as well. Here's what's next tonight. A new report concludes that the White House broke the law when it agreed to bring Sergeant Bo Bergdahl home. I'm Catherine Heard in Washington. Those details coming up. And remember, as always, for the latest news, you can visit us online. Search for Idaho on your side on Facebook and Twitter. Now, the Allergy Report, brought to you by Boise Valley Asthma and Allergy Clinic. Well, here's the good news. Cool weather, not only does it feel good, but it also keeps our pollen count down. Only 35, which is in the moderate range. Most of that is Kinopod. However, as we move into the fall months, we'll see that sagebrush continue to increase. So watch that begin to flip here probably in the next few weeks or so. We're going to send it over to Roland and Michelle now. All right, thanks, Jake. Well, as we told you earlier in the show tonight, a new report says the Obama administration broke the law by not notifying Congress in appropriate time before releasing five Taliban leaders in exchange for Sergeant Bo Bergdahl. Fox News Chief Correspondent, Intelligence Correspondent, Catherine Herridge has the latest on the story. A new report concludes that the White House broke the law when it agreed to release Taliban leaders in exchange for Sergeant Bo Bergdahl in May. The Government Accountability Office says the Defense Department violated the law by failing to notify key Capitol Hill committees at least 30 days before the swap. The report also says the Pentagon used funds that were not technically available to them. Lawmakers on both sides of the political aisle weighed in on the findings. Look, he didn't follow the law. This is the most serious matter. This is not good for our country. It's not good for our national security. Congress should hold the executive to account, should keep the executive's feet to the fire in the best of times and in the worst of times, and without regard to which party the executive office happens to belong to. The report comes three months after the release of five Taliban leaders from Guantanamo Bay in exchange for Bergdahl, who disappeared in Afghanistan in 2009. Under the terms of the swap, the Taliban members are to remain in Qatar for a year. Despite the report's findings, Department of Defense Press Secretary John Kirby tells Fox News, quote, The operation to retrieve Sergeant Bergdahl was lawfully conducted. Nothing has changed about our view that this was a lawful recovery operation. Whether the new report will lead to any legal action remains to be seen. The House Armed Services Committee is expected to vote on a disapproval resolution in the coming weeks. In Washington, Catherine Herridge, Fox News. TV's top honors are Monday, and we have a preview of the Emmy Awards. It's next on Fox 9 On Your Side. Hollywood is rolling out the red carpet for the 66th Primetime Emmy Awards. This year, the big night scheduled to air live on Monday. Fox's Dominique DiNatale gives us a preview of what to expect in tonight's entertainment news. Final preparations are being made for Monday's Primetime Emmy Awards, where the TV industry will be watching closely to see if the online streaming service Netflix can compete with the established cable and broadcast networks. It's an exciting time for TV, mostly because I think people always thought if you could get it via the internet, it would be a lower quality, which we're finding out it's not. I didn't mean for any of this to happen. Orange is the New Black and House of Cards received most of Netflix's 31 nominations. It really is about the work, I feel like, and my the biggest prize of this job is being able to come back on a regular basis and leave set and I feel so I feel so creatively fulfilled. For the show to have received as many nominations as it did, for Netflix to have received 
as many nominations as it did is, is uh, um, it's groundbreaking. Uh, for me, it's incredibly uh, honoring to be included. While Game of Thrones leads all shows with 19 nods, FX's Fargo and American Horror Story Coven follow close behind. Newcomers Masters of Sex and HBO's True Detective are also getting a lot of buzz. It was a whole dream. Let's not lose sight that most of the programming is still being done on the broadcast and, and basic and premium cable networks. And that's where the, the great majority of our, our nominees come from. And, and they still and will continue to do great work. Fox's So You Think You Can Dance is up for outstanding reality show, while Cosmos' A Space Time Odyssey garnered 12 nods. Wanting it to matter, having it matter, and then having sort of official endorsement of that fact is a great feeling. Two-time winner Andre Brower is returning to TV's biggest night with a supporting actor nomination for his work on Brooklyn Nine-Nine. It's a fantastic honor. I mean, to, to be singled out by my peers as being worthy of uh, these nominations is fantastic. And just announced, Billy Crystal will pay tribute to his late friend Robin Williams. Robin's death has resonated with the whole country and certainly in the television business. And we felt like we needed to do something for Robin that was um, uh, appropriate and meaningful. In Hollywood, Dominic Di Natale, Fox News. And we're one week away from the opener against Ole Miss. Sports director Paul Gerke got one last position preview. We'll kick it off with the kickers on the other side of the break. Now Steve's hometown sports with sports director Paul Gerke. A couple years ago, the NFL Network's Rich Eisen popularized the phrase, punters are people too. They may not be as big or as fast as other football players, but the kickers, punters, and long snappers are an integral part of any team, especially at Boise State. Here's my ninth and final on your sidelines position preview. It's a tight-knit group with the specialists, especially because the majority of our time is on the sideline, you know, standing around talking and making jokes. Our playbooks are an inch thick of, uh, you know, the Coach Harson section. I wouldn't even call it a playbook. I would say it's a schedule and make sure you're here on this at this time and that's it. And then the linemen come in and it's, you know, 200 pages thick and we just kind of stand there and, you know, it's, it's kind of awkward, but it's good. <laughs> so the specialists at Boise State don't have a lot of summer reading to do. That's fine. They found other ways to fill their time. When we're here all day, we kind of come up with some games. Me and Sean play a lot of ping pong. I actually uh, won the series this year in fall camp for the first time. So, uh, and then we, you know, we make up games. We ended up playing baseball in the team room one day and uh, just a lot of knickknack things. Senior Dan Goodale is not only the ping pong champion, he's also reprising his role as the starting kicker. Dan made 17 of 19 field goal attempts in 2013. I know what I'm gonna get when I step out on the field and I've experienced everything. I've experienced the lows and I've experienced the highs. And so I know what to expect now. And I think that's allowed me to be more comfortable. When the ball comes off his foot, it's just like, you know, it's a boom. It's crazy and, and how far the ball flies and how high it goes and I mean he's pretty much money and I don't want to jinx him but he's he's doing really well. Dan has done a good job with that group in particular of uh, leading that group and, and having those guys prepared when it comes to their time to practice because um, there's some lag time that they're not always out there and, and they've come out there and they've done a good job for us. Former head coach Chris Peterson was known to actively avoid field goal attempts, especially from outside 40 yards. Dan says the new staff is giving him more of a chance to show what he can do. We've definitely expanded our range a little bit. We're kicking from deeper and when we do need to kick field goals, we're going to kick field goals. You know, I've gotten a lot of reps in practice and that's been good. And most of the reps have been game-like reps where we get, you know, we get live looks from the defense, so that's been good too. Tyler Rossell will serve as Goodale's backup and will likely take over the starting role next season. Redshirt sophomore Sean Whale is the only punter on the roster. I haven't really thought of it as, you know, me being the only punter as like other, other people have said like job security, you know, but for me it's kind of just me going out and doing my thing and, and getting better and being the best that I could be. You know, he gets a hold of it now, and I think he does He does a good job with that. He's, he's more consistent now than he was. The kickers and punters, we get some recognition. I feel better for the long snappers, especially because they get zero. All right, Sean, just because you vouched for them. That's good. Kevin Keen and Matt Coda are the two long snappers. Keen should be the starter. Kevin and Matt have done a great job, and they get, you know, nothing. But if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't be where we are, you know. 
we couldn't do our job. By the sounds of it, all the specialists have had a strong, consistent fall. But what about trick plays? How consistent are they then? I could throw decent. I'm, I'm not a Trevor Harmon, but <laughs> yeah, he had a he could throw that thing. Oh my gosh! I don't know about that. I'll just whatever they tell me to do, I'll go do that. So that's uh, something you gotta have to ask Coach Harson. Through high school and stuff, I always joke, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna take it to the house and I'm gonna score and all this. But you know, hopefully we'll get the shot. That's the last of my On Your Sidelines position previews. So you can find all nine of them on our website, IdahoOnYourSide.com. And if you want even more Bronco love, check out my half-hour Boise State football special. That's tomorrow night at 7 o'clock right here on Today's Six. Thank you, Paul. Here's a live look at Boise from the Ford Dealers Tower Cam. Jake is back in next with the On Your Side forecast. A little break in the heat. I'm loving these temperatures. I, I am too. Especially right into the start 70s, start of school. Jake? Yeah, well, in a brisk morning for the kids yeah. out there. Going to wake them up for sure, though. I don't think that's going to be a bad thing for the parents. Get them out to the out to the bus and get them ready. So, hey, it's going to be a cool weekend and perhaps a couple of days of some precipitation in the valleys as well. 50% chance of seeing some rain tomorrow, more so in the overnight hours. And then that'll get out of the way Saturday morning and then just leave some cool, pleasant conditions for us. Uh, it's going to be mid 80s all week and stay there pretty solidly. So uh, for a start to a school week, you know, maybe as the kids get out of the house, parents can then go outside and enjoy <laughs> some of this nice weather that we're going to be uh -huh. having here for the next few days. Spoken uh -huh. by the bachelor. <laughs> I know, Mind but you. he <laughs> knows apparently. He knows in advance. <laughs> But we did get some stormy weather, too. We had a tornado warning in a part of the state today. Yes, very severe weather happening in Magic Valley, eastern parts of the valley, uh, or Idaho. So we're definitely going to be keeping an eye on that. Absolutely. Okay. Thanks, Jake. Thank you for joining us tonight. Have a great night, everyone.